Welcome back to Godot 101. This is part five of the series. And in this video, we'll be talking about how to make a sprite that is controlled by the player. As always, if you haven't watched the previous videos, please do go back and watch them because there will be a lot of things that I will assume you already know because we've covered them in previous videos. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start with a main scene which I have made just have a node in it, nothing but a plain old node. That's where we're going to put all of our main code. But before we do that, we're going to make the player. And I've included some art here, which you can download at the link below. Just unzip it in your project folder. And we've got some objects here that we'll be able to use. And then I have this full player folder that has a little animated alien guy that we can have walking around. And that's gonna be our player. So we're gonna start by making a new scene. And then we need to talk about how we're gonna handle our player's movement and collisions and all that kind of stuff. So if we look at the node list, I'm just gonna search for collision. And you can see under node 2D, there's an object called a collision object 2D. And it has as its children area 2D and three different physics body 2Ds. And these are for doing different kinds of collisions and physics simulations. And there's pros and cons for each one, or I should say there's, there's reasons to use each of these for different kinds of games that you might be making. Okay, and, and area 2D basically can just tell you when it overlaps something, when something uh, bumps into it or, or overlaps its area. The three physics body 2Ds help you do you know, physics simulations. The kinematic body 2D is for moving sprites. Uh, you see the icon is the little space invader guy because this is the kind of physics that is sometimes called arcade physics. It's not intended to be realistic, but it does let you make walls that characters can't go through, things like that. Uh, the rigid body 2D is for realistic physics, something like Angry Birds, where you want to hit a stack of blocks with something and have the blocks all fall down, uh, all that kind of thing uh, with realistic gravity and things like that. That's what a rigid body 2D is for. And then a static body 2D is an object that doesn't move. And this is more efficient for things like walls and the ground and things that you don't need to animate so that so the engine doesn't need to do the calculations for that body moving around. It's just going to sit there. That's why it's called static. And we'll get into later in the series how you use each of these. But for this first example, we're going to use an area 2D because we're going to make our our character walk around and we want to know if it ever uh, if it ever collides with an item so we can pick it up so that's going to be our player so we're going to choose the area 2d and we're going to call it player all right we're just going to save this we call it player that's fine and bring my note out here so there's my area 2d now this by itself isn't going to do very much, right? It doesn't look like anything, so we're going to need to add a sprite to it. So we'll go back to our sprite here, and then I'm going to go in the player one, and I'm just going to pick the standing one, alien green front. I'm going to drop that in. And there is our little alien. Now, something you might notice if you zoom in really far, you're going to notice that it gets really blurry. Right, the pixels are all smoothed and smeared out. And in a lot of 2D art, that's not what you want. So if we go over here on the texture and we click this little right arrow here, we can see on the flags that filter is turned on. If I turn off that filter, now we see the pixels as they were drawn by the artist. Right? And it's not as apparent with a sprite like this one, but there's some that it's, uh, it makes it really look ugly. And you can set that as the default if you go into your project settings and go to the 
image loader. There's an option here to have filter off by default and that way every time you drag a new image in you won't have to go and check that box to turn that off. Okay. So there's our player. He's a little big. If we run the scene he takes up a lot of the screen. So I'm going to shrink him a little bit. All right, we're going to go on the scale here and let's put him to I'm going to put 0.6. Okay. So there he is. But by itself, this character won't collide with anything. The area 2D, the area 2D node doesn't include collisions. It can, but you have to define what the shape of the collision you want to use is. So I'm going to rename this to Sprite with a lowercase. So I keep all my names lowercase. And I'm going to lock the player so it can't so we can't accidentally drag the sprite off of it. So now we're going to go and we're going to add a collision shape to D as a child of the area. And the first thing you'll notice is that we get a little warning symbol here. And what that warning symbol tells us is you have to choose a shape. You can't use this collision shape without a shape being defined. And that's the very first thing right here on the inspector. So if we click down arrow here, we have a few options. There are all sorts of different shapes you can use. Capsule shapes, circle shapes, rectangle shapes are the most common. But you can make any sort of shape you might that might fit your object. Okay, so we're just going to pick a rectangle shape. We're going to keep things really simple to start with. Okay, so now we get this blue area. If we zoom in on our player here, we can see this is so this is going to be the collision area. And obviously, we want to resize this. Now, if we drag these corners of the square and stretch it. Do not ever do this. Okay, Never do that. Collision areas, the physics doesn't work right with the shapes being rescaled. You can't do that. But inside there are some handles that let you grab. You can grab these little corners and you can drag them like this. Okay, And now you might notice we're not centered so we're going to be off a little bit. And that's because our sprite is 128 by 256. He's got this empty area above him. Uh, we need to offset that. So we want to click on the position here and just shift it down by 32 so that it's centered. And then we can just grab these little handles and stretch them around until they are however we want them. Right? If you want the the player only the center of the body to be a collision. You want it to be, you know, wider. You can set it however you want, right? So I'm just going to leave it like this for now. I don't need to do anything fancy. I'm going to put it like that. So there's our collision shape, and you can see it outlined with a blue area. Okay, let's make a script. We're going to add script here. Area 2D player dot gd. All right. Now to move our player around, we're going to want to use we're going to use the arrow keys, and that means we need to set up our inputs. So if we look at the project settings under uh, input map here. There's a bunch of these already in here. This is the default input map that Godot uh, loads, and so the arrow keys right now, left, right, up, and down are set to UI up, UI right, UI left, and they also have gamepad buttons on there if you happen to have one of those. Uh, and you can go in here and you can add other ones if you wanted. You can add other you can add other keys to these actions. These are these are called actions. And you can create your own actions too. Like you could name name one shoot and whatever buttons make shoot happen. That would be the action you look for in your code. So we're gonna just gonna stick with the default ones right now. UI underscore left, right, up and down. And we're just going to have that move our player. So in our ready, we're going to set fixed process to true so that we can run something every frame. That's going to be our animation and our checking for the keys. So that is going to have some code in it. So first, I'm going to set a, a variable. Um, let me click on player here in the inspector so that you can see 
this is our player node. And if I go back to the script, I'm going to add a variable for the speed of the player. So I'm going to put export var speed equals 400. Now when I hit save on this script, look at there. So now the speed variable has appeared in our inspector and we can, we can actually change it right here in the inspector without going and changing it in the code. That's what export does. So any variable you want exposed into the editor and, and viewable in the inspector, you can just put export in front of it. Very handy. Okay. We're also going to have a velocity that's a vector two. And this movement is going to work very similar to how we did the animated sprite, where we're going to set the position of the sprite to whatever position it's at plus velocity times delta. We just need to check to see if the player is pressing the keys. And you do that with input is action pressed and then the name of the action. And you can see the suggestions have popped up here. So let's start with say UI right. Right? UI right was the right arrow key. So if they have pressed that, then this will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. So this is going to be true or false, whether the button is pushed. Okay? And the same for all the other ones. And determining which ones are, are pressed is what direction we're going to go in. Right? If right and up are both pressed, we're going to go up and to the right. So we're going to need to figure out what our input vector is. What direction is the player having us move? Right? And this can be this is going to be a combination of the two of the keys. So it could be one zero, it could be one negative one, right? Depending on what they have pushed. It's going to be something like that. And so what we can do is we can set the input the x of the input vector equal to this, which could be one or zero. Right? This is the right arrow key. And I'm going to say minus the left arrow key. That way, if left is true, it'll be negative 1. If both left and right are pressed together, then x will be 0, so we won't move. Right? And so we will just duplicate that line, and we're going to have down and up. Sorry for the long line. I have my font kind of big so that you can read it so it does make the lines long. But we're just taking the x component of the vector is going to be right minus left. And the y component of the vector is going to be down minus up. Okay. So now we know what our input is. And our velocity is going to be, need to be set to that direction. But we want to take the input, that input vector and normalize it because we don't want it to be longer in the diagonal directions, right? We don't want, if it's this, to be multiplying by a bigger number than if it was that. Okay, so, so we have normalized and then we just multiply by the speed to get it to the right length. So now our velocity vector will point in the direction we want and we can run it. There we go. I can now run around the screen very simply. Right. We have to deal with the edges, but I have basic eight-way movement. Okay, now we're going to wrap up by stopping at the screen edges. Now I've gone ahead and I copied and pasted from our previous example of the bouncing sprites. These two variables, screen size, which is the size of the viewport that we're looking at, and extents, which was the size of the sprite. So I'm doing get texture, and I'm doing it on the sprite node. So we get the size of the texture. And then I'm setting the position to the center. Now to, to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to get, a, we're going to set the variable position equal to this, equal to this stuff. Okay. And we're going to do that so that we can adjust it. And we just want to take position x and we want to make sure it can't go lower than the left-hand side of the screen or greater than the right-hand side of the screen. And another word for that is we want to clamp it. 
clamp is a function that will take some variable or some value I should say and make sure it doesn't go below or above this minimum or maximum. So we want to take position x and the minimum that we want it to be is well we'll put zero and the maximum will be screen size dot width and pause y we're going to clamp to zero screen size dot height okay and then we set position to that position okay and then this is what that will do is it's going to let us go to there and there and, oh, and there oh I see what happened okay so I just realized when we set up our player and we adjusted this collision remember how we shifted this I shifted the wrong one what we want to shift is because this is this is our root node this is where the position we're tracking and see how the player is offset so we need to take the player sprite and we need to move it up we move it up by 64 okay and that will make it now see that now it's centered on the area here's the area 2d it's centered on there and then we need to not shift our collision we're going to set that back to zero okay sorry about that i was just doing it backwards okay so now when we run this our player will stop our player's center is going to stop at the edges right just like we did before we're just going to have to adjust that by the extents and we'll do that by saying it's extents dot width or screen size dot width minus extents dot width and then this will be the same thing except for height okay okay now we have our character staying on the screen not going off and we are ready for the next video where we will start making this little guy be animated right, i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching